Hi, and thank you so much for stopping by to spend some time with me today. I'm Lisa, and Nico says hello as well, because of course, <laughs> as soon as I start recording, he starts barking. Uh, but anyway, in today's video, I thought we'd go over the Saturday skirt as the pattern just released this past Saturday. It's so cool. I was one of the pattern testers, as I mentioned before, and it's just your perfect 1970s country western boho skirt pattern. There's four different views. I It's so cool. Um, so I want to go over that with you all today. And then also I do have another sewing plan in the works that I don't think I'll be able to finish by the time I leave as we're leaving pretty soon for another long road trip. But I thought I'd show it to you guys in case you want to pick up the pattern for yourself as I think it's so cool. I showed it to you all in a previous video, but I thought I'd show you all actually three different outfits that I think I want to make as I think it'll be really cool. And it kind of goes in with this country western boho theme, which... I'm thrilled about. I think I might have mentioned this in my last video or two videos ago that I've been really excited to see the patterns that are coming out because I kind of finally feel like a lot of the patterns that are coming about are more of my true style as I take a lot of elements from the 70s. Um, it all kind of started with my love for Gunny Sacks about five or six years ago. And so outside of sewing, a lot of my day-to-day -day style is kind of more of like a bohemian style and also kind of country. So. Just thrilled to see the direction a lot of these pattern designers are going in and so I thought I'd share some stuff with you guys. So let's get into it. So the Saturday skirt sewing pattern is by Caden Naughton. So there's four views. I went with view B and I'll talk about that in a second. But basically the similarity in all four skirts is it's going to be a high-waisted skirt. It's meant to be close to a maxi length and then all four have the yoke detail. And the difference is View A and B have the gathers right below the yoke, and then view B or C and D, um, it's gonna be more of your A-line silhouettes, silhouette, so no gathers and you use much less fabric. And I like the different points, I guess. I don't know what you call those. I like the one with just the center point, and then also you have the two points. I think there's a technical term in the pattern, forgive me for <laughs> not using it. Um, but I think it's such a cool skirt, and my biggest concern was with this being more of a kind of a, I guess a drop waist skirt, if you consider where the yokes hit and where your hips hit, I was concerned that it was just going to poof out way too much in the hip area, but it actually fit really well. And I've told you all that I really don't like how gathered skirts fit me, even though I wear them, but they just, they don't look great on me, but this is, this is wonderful. So so let's get into the sizes and it's rated as a ventures beginner. I would totally agree with that. Her instructions were very easy to follow. She made a couple of tweaks after our um, pattern testing group, but all in all, just super easy to follow. I think she's making a tutorial on her YouTube, I think for the skirt. Um, if I find it, I'll link it in the description box below so you guys can check it out. She made a great tutorial for the Catalina top that I made previously, really easy to follow. Um, and then the recommended fabrics, you're basically going to want to go with wovens and it's going to be like a medium to heavyweight-ish fabric. Um, you can range from denim to cotton lawn to poplin, um, really anything. You could even do a very lightweight fabric. I just don't know if you would get the look that you're really going for. Um, and then for sizing information. So the initial body measurements ranges from, I'm gonna give you waist and hip because we don't need bust, right? So it's what ranges from a waist of 23 inches to a waist of 57 inches or a hip of 33 inches to a hip of 66 inches. And then I would say there's about two inches of ease, give or take in the pattern, so something to keep in mind. Um, and then the size that I went with, I went with view B, which is the kind of the center point with the gathers. And I went with a size three and it fit perfectly. I'm five, two and a half. And then my waist measurements, um, is 26 inches and my hips are 38 inches. And the finished garment measurements for a size three is a waist of 27 and a half inches and a hip of 39 inches. So totally perfect. Um, I mean the hip, I guess it does actually matter regardless if you're using the gathered view or the kind of a line view because of the fact that um, this is going to hit at the bottom, kind of the kind of the widest part of your hip. So, um, so I guess probably what I'll just get into is the takeaways from the piece I made. So, the only there's two modifications I had to make with this. Um, I could have shortened it a little bit, but I decided not to. Really, the main modification I had to make was I had to shorten the yoke 
which this is a yoke if you all don't know what a yoke is, by about an inch, as I found that this was, I could button it up, but it was like hitting right into my rib cage, because again, I'm just I'm shorter and I have a shorter torso. Um, and I've come maybe more of like a, I guess a thicker body type from exercising and lifting weights and stuff. So what I found though, was after I shortened the yoke by about an inch, the waistband, so normally the waistband would overlap here by about an inch, and then you have your, your button closure. What I found was when I shortened the yoke, the waistband was a touch too small. So I have just been lazy and procrastinating, but really what I just need to do is just extend the waistband about an inch, and then I can just sew my button back in. So that is just the one thing I would, I would keep in mind, and it also could have been because you know, I ripped out all the stitches out of the waistband, redid everything. So possibly you wouldn't actually have this issue. It's just this one kind of had seen some days with <laughs> some of the work that I had to do to rip a bunch of stuff apart. I also had to take out the zipper um, as well and fix that. So, and that is also a side note is it does have a zipper closure and the zipper is in the side. Um, and what I decided to do was pull some inspiration from Gunny Zacks because it's my favorite, favorite designer. And that's why I ended up doing this ribbon trim here and I just uh, top stitched it in. And then I also did it in the back as well. And what I found, the before I shortened the waistband, I don't think I took a picture of it. I might have a picture somewhere if I can find it, I'll insert it. I initially also did the trim up here as well because that's kind of how the gunny sack skirts are. Hopefully I can insert a photo of one in here. A lot of times they'll do the ribbon trim here, the ribbon trim here, and then they'll have kind of like a little lace up corset here or something kind of cool. For me, it almost looked like an outline of underwear or something. It just looks kind of weird. So I took out all the stitches up top when I shortened the waistband as I felt like this was probably the optimal placement of the ribbon trim, but you could play around with this. And then also I added just a little bit of lace trim in the hemline. And then the top that I made, which I did talk about this in a previous video, I'll link it below the details of this McCall's pattern, but I also added the lace trim in here to kind of tie it into this uh, skirt so I can make this full outfit and I did end up um, adding in my buttons into the back of this because the last video I think I hadn't done that quite yet and I think it'll be a cute contrast and then the button that I'll add into this skirt will be this exact same color so it's kind of a cute matchy matchy top and skirt and this fabric it's just like a quilting cotton and I got this second hand at my creative reuse center I think Usually, I think I've mentioned this before, the fabric's on average about $3 a yard, and I think I got four yards of this. So, And so, yeah, so I ended up making this whole outfit for under, I would say, about $20, give or take, um, factoring like the zipper, the fabric, um, the $1.99 McCall's pattern, and then um, the buttons and thread and stuff. So I felt pretty pleased with it. And um, also with the skirt, you're going to have four different panels of fabric. You're going to have two in the front, two in the back. Um, I do like the side zipper a lot. If I'm not mistaken, I think the traditional gunny sack skirts usually have a zipper just in the back. Um, not that that really matters, but something to keep in mind if you're going to want to recreate this and kind of make your own like gunny style skirt or, you know, 70s Western. There are some differences in this pattern. I think you could also have a lot of fun with this. Um, I thought about maybe doing like a skirt, like basically making a tier. So we have this here and then having a ruffle down here and the ruffle color separate from the main part of the skirt and then matching the ruffle color to the yoke. And that would definitely bring in more of that kind of 1970s kind of patchwork-ish style of skirting. You could do all kinds of interesting things with, um, I even thought maybe it'd be cool if you did some tucks, you could do a few tucks here, um, or you could even do I've seen some other, I keep mentioning gunny because that's my inspiration. I've seen other gunny skirts where they have like about three layers or three rows, I'm sorry, of lace or ribbon um, close to the bottom of the hemline. Like there's all kinds of interesting little things you can do to really make this your own skirt. So I just, I really love this and I truly actually plan on making one of each style by the end of this fall. I'm honestly a little bit nervous about V, C, and D, which don't have the gathers as I have a bit of a bum on me. <laughs> and um, I feel like I'm gonna have to do a little bit of tweaking. I'm definitely gonna have to make up a good wearable mock-up, which was basically what this was, um, but it turned out just so lovely. And here's the floral print. If you couldn't quite see it before, this is the style and such a perfect shade of, I don't even know what this would be called, forest green or something. Um, it's like a softer, 
emerald. And so, yeah, so that was the rundown with the skirt. So if you want to check it out, I would definitely recommend um, going into her Etsy shop. I'll link it below as well. I can't recall what it's retailing for, but I will um, put that on the screen somewhere too for you all. Um, but lovely pattern and Kaden has a really cool style. She has an Instagram page that I stumbled across um, a couple weeks ago actually. And that's how I found her. And uh, she's got a really cool vibe to her and she's very sweet. Um, she's actually right now drafting two new patterns. One's gonna be for a pair of jeans. It kind of has some elements from the 1940s. It's gonna be a high waist and then some front ties. Kind of gives me also 70s vibes. It's gonna be really cool. And then she's also drafting a dress right now that reminds me a lot of the Christy Dawn Scarlet dress. I actually do own that dress. I bought that dress a few years ago on sale. Uh, one of my favorite dresses and I've tried to find the perfect pattern to recreate it. I bought a couple, but I've just never gotten around to it. Um, I'll insert a photo of the Scarlet dress and then also insert a photo of her dress. Um, the difference is with her dress that she's drafting right now, she just had it on Instagram, is she's doing a lace back, kind of like a corset type of a lace up in the back so that you um, can really pull things in where you want them to be. So I think it's gonna be a really beautiful dress. I'm not sure if she's gonna do pattern testing for it or if she's just going to launch it or what her plan is, but she's got some really cool styles and I'm just amazed at the speed she can turn these patterns out because just even pattern drafting, I can't mentally compute ever doing that. <laughs> it's definitely not something I will probably ever offer because it's just not something I would ever desire to do because there's so much that goes into it, but I admire all the hard work that goes into it and the love that goes into the pattern drafters. So, so keep a lookout for that as well. And again, I'll link everything in the description box below. And then um, on to what I am going to be working on next. And I'm just gonna get a quick sip of my coffee here. Um, isn't this mug so cute? I think I've showed it to y'all before, but if not, I thrifted it. It's a little rooster mug. Um, so I showed you all, and it was a couple of videos ago. It's the Schultz Patterns Norma top and skirt. There's also a dress as well if you don't want anything cropped. And it's technically not a fall outfit, you know, when you do something that's that cropped, but I love that, that two-piece set. And I have a couple of different ideas of what I'm going to do with it. And so, but I didn't realize how much fabric you actually need for it. You almost need, I think it's like almost four yards, if I'm not mistaken, if you make the top and then the skirt with the different tiers. So, and I think it's this, I think they're both a pullover because the top has a specific size, but the skirt has a size range of like zero to 10 or something like that. Those aren't the real numbers, but for an example, and it has an elasticated waist. So it looks like it's actually gonna be fairly simple to make up. I'll, I'll leave more details when I make it. Um, but I just think it's so amazing. So I, um, I was going to try to make my wearable mock-up and I realized I don't really have any like junk fabric, if you will, that isn't that right amount of yardage. And I couldn't really find anything that I wanted to mix and match to make the separates. So I went to my creative reuse center with my husband yesterday. He had to go get an oil change anyway. So I decided I would kill some time and pop over there shoot you know how inconvenient for me and i found some really beautiful fabric which now i'm like oh, i don't know if i want to use it for this in case something goes awry with me trying to draft this but i found this stunning fabric it reminds me a lot of a print that i recently saw in mood fabrics um and this is just a standard cotton i don't know maybe it's like some kind of a poplin it's it's that kind of weight um and i got this for three dollars a yard and i think i got I got five yards of this, but it's 44 inches. So I think I'll have enough to make my wearable mock-up with this, unless I decide I'm gonna be a hoarder because I think it's such pretty fabric and I might change my mind and maybe just use a bed sheet or something like that instead. My biggest concern is the top because I actually think I accidentally cut out the wrong size. We started watching this show, I can't talk. We started watching the show Suits. I watched that show when it first came out years ago and um, we're not like a show's couple per se, but um, we kind of ran out of good movies. I feel like the new movies are just kind of garbage. There's not really any kind of script at all. And so we started watching old TV shows. I think I mentioned that to y'all before. And yeah, so now we're out of suits. So I think I was too focused on the episode and I cut out, I think the wrong size of the top, but anyway. 
So I picked this up with intentions of using it for a wearable mock-up, but we will see. I might end up using this for a dress that I have plans to make this fall, and I'll show it to you all in my fall sewing plans video. It's a Vogue dress pattern I picked up a year ago. And then also, um, he ran a bunch of errands yesterday. I was with him. I was actually working on the road um, just for like a couple of hours. And so he also had to go to like a wood craft store. And so I sat by the thrift shop there really quickly. And I found these really beautiful fabrics. They each are only like a yard. This is about two yards. And this is no Merchant and Mills little acorn fabric that they have now. But it, I was inspired when I saw this and I thought I could maybe make a cute little skirt out of this. And I think I could do some patchwork styles, whether it's a dress or skirt, maybe with these fabrics or maybe even get a blouse out of it or something. I don't know. But I got these each for like, a, I think $1.99 or $2.99. And then um, I found this cute pattern. I can't remember where I was at, if I was at my Creative Beauty Center or where I was, but it's this um, Laura Ashley McCall's pattern. And I think this is a pretty cute pattern too. I like the button front closure. And um, I'm not as hardcore on the Laura Ashley as everyone else is. I Some of them are cute. I'm not really a big 80s fan. I like more 70s kind of cuts of things that I feel like 80s are slightly oversized in some of the places that I don't necessarily want to be oversized. But I thought, gosh, it's a Laura Ashley dress. And while it's one size too big, um, I might be able to learn some techniques from the older pattern instructions. So, so that's what I got. I'm not really planning on it, but, um, but I definitely know that these will tie into some of my, my fall sewing plans too. So, so that's what's going on here. So hopefully I will get you all a fall sewing plans video next week. We'll see how that goes, but I'm curious what, what is your style that you're going for this fall? Like, do you have a specific style that you've been drawn to lately as I see so many different kind of things flowing through the sewing community it's our or do you are you just kind of like all over the place like how I typically am <laughs> and you can't really dial things in um yeah I'm just liking I, I felt like a lot of this the sewing patterns for a while were so oversized um which was not really my style and so I kind of struggled with like what do I actually make and what makes sense for me? So, so yeah, so for me, I'm really enjoying some of these things, but I know this might not be for everybody. So anyways, thank you so much for stopping by to spend a little time with me today and I will see you all very soon.